Hello everyone, I'm Allison Steinberg and welcome to In Focus. Happy Friday to you all, and if you remember last Friday, I actually wasn't here with you as I was in Dallas for a Biblical Prophecy, New World Order, Direction of Society conference led by Pastor Tom Hughes, along with an incredible lineup of speakers, many of whom I've had on this very program. One of those was our weekly regular guest, acclaimed investigative journalist and author Alex Newman. I was able to sit down with Alex at the conference and talk BRICS versus the West, left versus right, and the larger New World Order agenda. And I'm excited to continue that conversation here today. To begin, we have to discuss the latest BRICS meeting last week in South Africa. Somehow the meeting was not heavily reported on here in the U.S., but nevertheless, there was monumental news to come out of it. Before we get, begin with the developments, for those of you new to this program, BRICS is actually an acronym for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. According to the Pro New World Order Council on Foreign Relations, the idea of BRICS was coined from a Goldman Sachs paper entitled, wait for it, Build Better Global Economic BRICS. Imagine that interesting connection where you have one of the most influential Western banks birthing the very idea of this counterweight to the West, not to mention the closeness of the article to the World Economic Forum and Biden's regularly repeated phrase, build back better. I believe there's perhaps even more of a connection there, but first I'd like to highlight the news coming out of the latest BRICS meeting. Forbes reports the latest BRICS meeting is a, quote, new world order of strategic multi-alignment. The supposed counterweight to the Western-dominated system just announced plans to admit six more nations into the bloc. Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Argentina, Iran, Egypt, and Ethiopia will join BRICS in January 2024, creating a BRICS Plus. Keep in mind, going into the meeting, 23 countries submitted applications to join the bloc, meaning there are still numerous nations waiting to get in. According to the Center for Strategic and International Studies, the bloc will now control 72% of rare earth minerals and 42% of global oil supply, and will likely only grow in prominence now that there are still 17 other countries waiting for their turn to join the bloc. I've been reading much of what author and professor Anthony Sutton has written, and he says that the globalist elites understand that, quote, left and right are artificial devices to bring about change, and the extremes of political left and political right are vital elements in a process of controlled change. I'd like to bring on Alex Newman to discuss this, CEO of Liberty Sentinel Media. Alex, thanks for being back with us. It's great to have you. Great to be here. Thank you, Allison. So I want you to answer this with the backdrop of how Goldman Sachs created the term BRICS and where the elite's mantra of Build Back Better combined with their vision of moving us all, all off oil and the concept that gas is bad and electricity is good. It all just leads me to wonder, is this whole emerging struggle of the West versus BRICS just another left-right paradigm, if you will, or good guy, bad guy scenario ultimately to lead us to an alternate outcome uh, or their preferred agenda? I mean, after all, the core of the BRICS nations are in the G20, and uh, they profess they all want to work together, right? It's amazing, Allison. I think that is exactly what's going on, and not one in a thousand of these highly paid analysts in our intelligence agencies, the talking heads on TV, are explaining this properly to their audiences, whether that be U.S. government clients or the average media consumer in the United States. But you just hit the nail on the head. It's exactly what's going on here. Not only did Goldman Sachs come up with this silly term, BRICS, the whole concept of dividing East versus West, left versus right, and then merging it all into a superstructure uh, is very old. It's been used for a very long time. In fact, Anthony Sutton exposed some of this in his book, uh, Wall Street and the Bolshevik Revolution. And then uh, the subsequent book to that, where he explained how Western governments, particularly the United States, was subsidizing the rise of the Soviet Union, both militarily and economically. We saw the same thing with communist China. We saw the same thing in South Africa. We're seeing the same thing right now in Brazil with the reemergence of Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, uh, a Marxist through and through. Yes, I said it. That's exactly what he is. Him and Fidel Castro and the Sandanistas in Nicaragua and the FARC collaborated to build this massive communist movement across Latin America known as 
the Foro de Sao Paulo. And people are not getting what's happening here with the BRICS. They have one thing in common. Each of them is the anchor, the most powerful power within these emerging regional superstructures that are being imposed on the world. So you have Russia, for example, as the anchor of what's being called the Eurasian Union that Vladimir Putin is building. Right now it's the Eurasian Economic Union. Coming soon it'll be the Eurasian Union. South Africa is by far the most powerful and economically strong nation within the African Union and certainly within the uh, South African Economies Union that they're building right now with the Southern African nations. You've got India is the most powerful uh, nation, obviously, in the SAARC, which is the regional grouping they're building there in South Asia. And then, of course, you have China, which is the anchor of the ASEAN, the ASEAN Association of Southeast Asian Nations. They have a special agreement with communist China. So when you take all of these countries and governments that are bound up together with the BRICS, you're talking dozens and dozens of countries, the majority of the world population, and you're talking about a power that can rival the Western bloc, which is right now being uh, really undermined if we're quite honest about it, the United States, Western Europe, Canada, etc., so that eventually they can set up a clash that will result in the emergence of this new world order. And if you read the declarations that the BRICS put out every time they have a meeting, you'll see they're working toward the exact same goals. They're very much pro-UN global governance, and they say so. They're very much pro-new world order. They're very much pro-massive government intervention in the economy. So what we're seeing here is a massive setup to suck humanity into a global governance system with a precursor with a predecessor of regional governance which is being built right now absolutely incredible it's just overwhelming the amount of information and and everything that's going on behind the scenes that so many people are oblivious to so i'm so grateful for you bringing this to our attention alex now since BRICS didn't announce a new cbdc uh could all of their previous posturing have been contrived by the elites perhaps to create a pathway toward a middle ground solution to the struggle between the West and BRICS into a CBDC not controlled necessarily by the U.S. dollar, but one controlled by the Bank of International Settlements and administered by the International Monetary Fund. Amazing, Allison. You are so far ahead of everybody else on TV. Uh, you, you really deserve a whole bunch of medals. I'm serious. Back in 2013, I believe I was the only journalist in the United States that covered this. The BRICS governments met down in Durban, South Africa, and they came up with the Itwin Kwaki uh, de uh, Declaration, they called it. And they specifically called for a new global monetary system anchored in the International Monetary Fund. They said it in plain English. Anybody can read this declaration. It's still available publicly. This was a decade ago where they said, we believe in creating a new global monetary system where the IMF's special drawing rights, and they, they use very complex terminology to try to confuse people. Think of the special drawing rights as a proto-global currency. It's based on a basket of currencies, the Chinese yuan, the Russian ruble, uh, the US dollar, the Japanese yen, the British pound, and the euro. They may bring in some additional ones later. But as they move the dollar to the side and as they build what even the people at the Council on Foreign Relations over 10 years ago started referring to as a multipolar world order, we're going to watch the dollar sideline and we're going to watch the IMF progressively strengthened until it truly functions as a sort of global central bank. Meanwhile, the Bank for International Settlements, the apex of the system, as Bill Clinton's mentor, uh, Professor Carol Quigley from Georgetown University put it, they're now coordinating the process with the central banks of the world, leading us toward the CBDCs. So each of the BRICS governments and each of their central banks is rapidly rolling out the CBDCs. They're currently, as we're speaking, empowering the IMF to create the global interoperability platform for the CBDCs. And ultimately, they've already started printing their own currency, this IMF, these SDRs. This is, in the truest sense, a global currency. That's what we're watching happen right now, and folks need to be paying attention. They absolutely do. We've got to fight back against this. Otherwise, we are all in for it. Terrifying future ahead if we don't put an end to this. Uh, Alex, would you speak a little more specifically on this whole left-right paradigm, as I do believe it's ultimately a manufactured creation by the elite's master of deception, the father of lies, to create division? I mean, most of uh, the concepts here of warfare, ultimately, is divide and conquer, and its power lies in getting one's opponent to fight amongst themselves. Here in the U.S., we, we see this so clearly, but on the global stage, could Satan perhaps be orchestrating this West versus BRICS struggle to divide his enemy, that, of course, being humanity? 
No doubt about it. Absolutely no doubt about it, Allison. And you mentioned Anthony Sutton. He describes this very clearly in a book about the skull and bones. He calls it America's secret establishment. And he says they use this process where you have a left and a right, and then you have a conflict between them, and then what emerges from that conflict is what they wanted all along, the synthesis of the thesis and the antithesis. So we're watching this play out in real time, and we're seeing it very particularly here in the United States, where they're trying to divide Americans and radicalize Americans into believing that their neighbor with the Trump sign or the Biden sign is the enemy. And if we can just crush these evil enemies who maybe believe slightly differently than us because they're watching CNN or Fox News or whatever it is, uh, then, you know, we can save America and we can fix. This is an absolute lie. And it, Jesus says it multiple times in the scripture. A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. In fact, in one quote, he says a kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, will be brought to desolation. So what we're watching right now is an effort to divide Americans against each other, an effort to divide humanity against itself so that they can come in and pose as the saviors. They've been doing this over and over and over again for generations. They keep doing it because they know it works very well. And so we as Americans, we as Christians, we need to stop falling for these tactics. We need to recognize our neighbor is not the enemy. In fact, at its core, this is really a spiritual battle. We are up against evil, not the Joe Biden supporter or the Trump supporter who lives across the street from you. Amen to that. Wow. Beautifully said. Alex Newman, we're all out of time today. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for weighing in on these very important important topics. We always appreciate it. Where, where can people find you for more of your great work? Uh, LibertySentinel.org. And thank you so much, Allison. Appreciate thank it. So much. God bless. We'd like to welcome you to our new home for uncensored news and hard-hitting talk shows. If you're tired of cable companies and social media giants chipping away at your most basic and important right, freedom of speech, by shadow banning, demonetizing, censoring, and policing every single one of your posts, then One America News on Locals is just what you've been looking for. Finally, you'll have the freedom to express your point of view and stay connected with like-minded fellow patriots. And the best part is, OAN on Locals is only five bucks a month. All of our credible, honest, unbiased reporting, ad-free talk shows, and exclusive content, all at the fraction of the cost of cable. So to watch, just click the Join button to get the news you can't get anywhere else.